Welcome to the fourth edition of 5-Minute Insights with Corporate Sales Market Leaders. I am Nigel Van Berkoven from Think.Cloud, and today we're meeting with Stuart Moss from the Cedar Port Hotels. Hi, Stuart. Thank you for your time today. Could you tell us more Hi. about your company and its negotiated business rates? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, Cedar Court Hotels is a privately owned company. Uh, we're owned by a company called uh, EC4. Uh, we have four large hotels in the UK uh, under the banner of, of Cedar Court. Uh, between those properties, we have nearly 500 bedrooms, uh, and as a group, we we, rep, well, we welcome a significant amount of nice business. We've got uh, 54 meeting rooms actually uh, on wow. uh, in the area of Yorkshire, so nice is a big deal for us. Great. And could you tell us about some of the challenges the industry is facing in optimizing my sales operations, and customer requests you believe that could be addressed better by the industry? Yeah, absolutely. So. I'm a big believer in cutting through the noise, and we'll, we'll touch on this. I maybe have a slightly unique take because I used to actually own an event agency, uh, which was sold in 2010. Uh, so I have a, a very firm opinion on the hotels that I used to like to work with. <laughs> um, so you have to make it as easy as possible for people to do business with you, first and foremost. If you don't have menu downloads, capacity charts, 3D walkthroughs on your website, it's a mistake. You should be able to compile the answers to every event inquiry as an agent from your website before I even have to talk to your account manager. That, that would be point one. Point two, uh, your office inquiry handlers, they have to be product ninjas. You have to give them a great CRM tool. We talk a lot uh, in Cedar Court about, if uh, rather macabrely, if I was hit by a bus, would this client be able to be serviced tomorrow? Yeah. And that's down to CRM and account management. If the beautiful people on the end of your phone lines are knowledgeable about my business, when I call you up, I'm gonna find that frustrating. So you have to ensure your people have got a great CRM system and it's got to have up-to-date data. We do a data cleanse probably every other day. We're a bit fastidious on that, but it's, it's important. So imagine I place half a million pounds into a London hotel and the same umbrella around a provincial hotel, maybe in Leeds or Manchester, and you, you don't know who I am, it's, it's just frustrating. And that happens. It happens a lot because the CRM data isn't up to date. You've got to have a coherent account development plans. My email has got to be as important when I email the Leeds Hotel as it is when I email the London Hotel that knows me. I've got to keep that alive. Whilst, whilst we're on with agents, actually, if you don't treat them the same as a corporate account, and I mean scheduled visits, fan trips, entertaining, it's a mistake. Uh, and for top marks, give them a target, you go back, you find the year's best production of N Nigel's events company. You say, Nigel, in 2018, you gave us a hundred thousand pounds. We'll go with pounds today, because I'm talking. Uh, in my business in that kind of year, next year, let's get to 125. How do we do it? How can I get you to that level? What, what can we do to really get ourselves both incentivized to get to that 125? And I'd be super excited to talk to you about the commission you're going to get when we get to 150. And that's how, that's how you need to leverage those accounts. So I guess point three there is to give your agent account development plans too. Uh, in the future, the brand that gets the landing page sorted so I can book my hotel space, my beds, my rail, my flight, my car, my evening entertainment. Whoever does that first is, is really going to win. Great. I think building more on what you were saying about the importance of CRM is the next question. It's a great follow on. And personally, this is the question I'm most excited about. So <laughs> unique to your experience at Cedar Court Hotels, could you explain the turnaround that you've led for the group in terms of group sales? Yeah. Um, so I, I literally walked into a business and any mistake you could make had been unknowingly made. Uh, we had every issue from GDS loading to rate parity with our OTAs. We had uh, we simply sat dormant for five years and stopped talking to people. And I think you can sum that up in one word, and that word's prominence. We, we, we just lost prominence everywhere. Yeah. So the first thing I addressed was a complete audit of every business account. And I think uh, it, bore, it bore a phrase that if, if my guys are watching this, they're going to laugh because it's all we talk about. It's red or green. Yeah. And when I say red or green, it's either in decline or it's going up. It's salespeople are brilliant at telling you a story about, you know, I was going to get there and I got the train and I fell off the train and the train derailed and I couldn't quite get to the appointment on time and I spilled a coffee in my eye and I really wanted to go and speak yeah. to that person. But, so it's either red or green. So the first thing we do, uh, and I would advise you to do if you're in a similar situation, is, is get a simple spreadsheet, get every account on there that's ever touched your business and then you want the company name, 
one, two, three, four, five, six year projections of what they've done, uh, or production rather than a projection. And then you want to forecast that to the next year. And it's back to the conversation we've just had. If you give me 100,000, let's get to one, two, five. How do we do that? What can we do to make that work between us? They're either red or green. You should be able to read five, 600 accounts and they're red or green. That's it. It's nothing more than that. Point two, it doesn't make sense to me to start your journey by looking outside for new markets when you've been historically stronger already. And this was a big conversation we had because everybody wants to reinvent the wheel. When the business is broken, everybody's got an opinion. They want to yeah. build a tent outside. They want to change the roof. They want to put a new swimming pool in. Everyone's got an opinion. But if you have been better before, get that back as bench. So it's the same as when you talk to hoteliers, which, which you will do often. Everybody wants to animate the restaurant outside. Everybody wants to get the outside public to come into their restaurant, but they're not feeding the people that stay. So it's called natural friends and it's the same in sales you have natural friends in your business people that have used you maybe didn't have a great experience or would use you if you get in touch with you you have natural friends first so point two natural friends and these are regular phrases you've got red or green natural friends point three and this is where we've had our biggest success and i'll i'll talk about this a lot you need to get some rock stars you need to get some rock star sales people and here's how you know, I think, if you've got a rock star salesperson in front of you and you're interviewing them. So if I say to you, Nigel, assume you've been offered and accepted this role, day one, what's your priority? And a rock star warrior is gonna say to you, uh, what am I walking into? What accounts have I got? What aren't we getting? What could we be getting? What do we need to get? And they're gonna be thinking about that and they're gonna come in with a plan of attack. The person that sits in front of you and says, I'm gonna walk around and say, hi, I'm going to get my business cards done. I'm going to find out where, you know, is great, but they're not thinking, they're not acting like rock stars. And we had a very candid conversation with the people that are now very fortunately part of my team, four senior business development guys and girls. And we were saying, look, day one, what's the message? And the amount of people I interviewed that were talking about, you need to change the cushions in the lobby. They're not right. <laughs> You're just going, oh my God. Yeah, come on. <laughs> An interior design interview, it's a sales interview. Tell me what you need to do to animate these sales. And the four people we've got now, and I interviewed a lot of people, like, listen, you're coming into a war zone, you're coming into a trench, you need to be ready to fight. And these four guys have the answer down to a T. So get a rock star, don't hire the person that wants to spend all day walking around saying hi. That's the yeah. third bit. <laughs> and I guess that also, as importantly, sorry, I've just thought of something else, is if you're sat opposite a person that you're going to employ and you don't want to think you could socialize with them, I can't see myself having a beer with this guy or going out with this lady and having a, a chat about things outside of work. You can't see that they could socialize with them. Neither do your clients want to. So you've really got the right people to send you a message. And I think that's where we've been enormously fortunate as Cedar Court. We've got four rock stars. No, I think that's, that's great. And it makes a lot of sense. And it's, perfectly feeding into the follow-up question that I actually really wanted to ask, which is what would you consider as your neo sales and operations unique selling points or difference? Yeah. It's the people, eh? Yeah. Um, obviously I've just touched on this now. I, I've been a manager um, since I was 19, not in sales operations, which I think we discussed the other day. So I came up through operations in hotels. So from 19, I have made, every mistake you can make as a manager for two decades <laughs> there will be there'll be people watching this now that don't recognize this version of stuart moss and they'll be thinking yeah this guy just seems like he's really clear and concise and he's not and i think you know you, you learn it's a craft you've got to learn you've got to involve and i truly hope that we watch this back in years to come and i've changed again because you've got to stay at the forefront of leadership you've got to know how to look after your people and that can be different to each person and you can tailor that but you've got to be flexible so this is a list that I've compiled of 20 years of distilled mistakes. <laughs> so one, I move obstacles out of my team's way. It's as simple as that. And I think if, you, if you're running a restaurant and you guys haven't got enough espresso cups, that's an obstacle. If you're going out to market and you haven't got coherent marketing that deals with the C-level executives that you need to speak to, that's an obstacle. Obstacles are anything, but it's your job to move them out of the way. Number two, 
you've heard this phrase already, I cut through the noise, I decide and I dilute the messages that my guys need because you can spend all day lost in emails and phone calls and any other bit of collateral that's coming your way. I decide what they need to know and I make sure that they stay laser focused on their account development plan and their bigger goal. I don't want them getting lost in noise because it's so easy to do, especially in big companies. I actually have a question to build on that. Um, so speaking of processes and getting your team to really focus, uh, this is related to the question I just asked, but building on that, do you think of, it, uh, of any process, specific process improvements that could help hoteliers be more efficient in selling and delivering mice and corporate sales? Yeah, I think as we touched on, you, you, your website needs to be match fit. Uh, you need to have excellent CRM. I think if you can automate anything that isn't selling, that's yeah. a win. Uh, and I think in terms of uh, specific improvement, again, the companies that we just touched on, the companies that are going to use uh, digital connectivity to, to really make their events hybrid and expand the remit of who's in the room. Yes. They're in a smart place. They're going to win. Okay. And last question. I know I've asked you a lot here, but how do you see the industry evolving in the coming years? I think naturally, uh, the way the world is now, the, the use of contactless technology is going to become more and more prevalent. I would expect that the operations that are now behind the curve on self-checking, key cutting, digital order taking, they're going to catch up quite quickly. Uh, I think the customer perception of value, this is what we've been talking about a lot recently with our messages, the customer perception of value is, is going to be more important than ever before. And I think given Yorkshire, where we are, um, it's a beautiful county, there's a, lot, and there's a lot of attractions, it's known for an attraction destination, but we wrote an open letter actually to those attractions recently and we said, listen, let's work together. We will market you with our marketing team. If you're a small attraction and you haven't got the reach we have, we will do it with you because we all need to be bigger than we ever have been before. We all need to have more value add than we ever have before. Yeah. And we, we actually created a package around that called the Great Yorkshire Escape, which I think is probably the best value package we've, we've ever offered. Uh, and I think that customer perception now is, is so crucial. And I think you're not only fighting against the fact that you've got to reach somebody to come and stay with you, you're actually finding that you've got to convince them to come and stay with you now as well because the world's changed. Uh, we've got to work together in your, in your markets, that, that much is clear. Uh, and I think outside of this, this is a, a really strong belief I have actually, and it might be because I've grown up through, you know, wait as a director, yeah. it's a fairly <laughs> road. Um, but outside of this, I think the businesses that have those truly great people with truly great personalities are always going to win. And I think we've all, by this stage, directed our own goodwill to businesses in our community uh, during, during the pandemic. And I think we've gone out to help the businesses that we feel deserve it because of how the, we've interacted. Yep. And we're going to to those four guys again. You simply cannot duplicate or replicate personality. And so many businesses have tried. You know, you can't do it. You need those great people. And I think we're now, the interesting thing after this, world starts to come back to normality we're going to see the businesses that have looked after their people we're going to be able to see the evidence of who is looking forward to getting back to work yeah. who wants to go back and hit it so i think it, it will become more of a, a personality fed business as it was before really some things just never change eh? yeah, it's coming full circle back around yeah. honestly no i i actually share that sentiment and truly believe that it is about focusing on people whether it's your staff or your guests that are going to drive hospitality businesses. I mean, that's what hospitality is. Always. So, Stuart, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And I have a great day. You too. Speak to you soon. Take care.